Party compositions are a huge part of the Dragon's Dogma 2 experience, from setting yourself into a possible hybrid vocation to assigning each one of your pawns for the best possible outcome for your party. But which ones should you choose? Are there any that are best? Truly, the answer is that nearly any and all compositions with a mage are going to be not only viable, but absolutely wreck the game. Before we even get started on my summary of the video, I'll tell you that some of the most fun I've had in this game is taking mages out of my parties or reducing my party to just myself and my main pawn. So flirt with that idea if none of these directly strike your fancy. But if this is your first time on my channel, the way I do things is by upfronting the knowledge of my videos so you can decide if it's the right one for you. Now, I can't exactly paraphrase an entire list of items, so I've gone ahead and put every single combination plus some bonus ones in the description and pinned comment. Just go ahead and take a look at those. See if any of them work for you or jump to the part in the video where I talk about them using the chapters with the timeline in the description. Just a note on the setups, the first vocation in the list is what I recommend you, the player, be. The rest is just up to however you want to mix it up. For instance, if I said a fighter and three thieves, I'm recommending you go fighter and have the rest of the pawns, main or otherwise, be thieves. But that's the entire gist of this video, and if that's all you wanted to know, please just feel free to shut the video down. Before you head out, please don't forget to like, comment, or subscribe if this video helped you, as that has a huge impact on my channel. And if you've not yet picked up Dragon's Dogma 2 for the PC, you can use the link to my Capcom-affiliated Nexus store in the comment and description. This will get you a key directly from the developer, and I get like a 20% comm commission, which helps me out infinitely. You can also find my playlist and pawn code in the comment or description as well. But let's get started here on the best party compositions in Dragon's Dogma 2. One of the very first comps I want to talk about is the Mystic Spear Hand, two sorcerers, and one mage. And the way I'm going to do this video is pretty much just me talk, and I'm going to put a bunch of uh, gameplay of these comps or other comps that are somewhat similar to them um, over lay it on top of it so you can kind of jump around as you see fit. But the way that this comp is really kind of working is factoring in the Mystic Spear Hand's capability to effectively tank by putting a bubble on everyone, right? And you as a Mystic Spear Hand can jump around and you have plenty of ways to control enemies. You can throw things, you can blow them up and shoot them everywhere. You can just jump from enemy to enemy. So you are effectively your own tank for the party. So this means that you're going to want to put on augmentations that are going to increase your, um, I almost said enmity or an aggro. This is not an MMO. Um, increase the chance that enemies are going to want to attack you. That's going to be crucial. And for your two sorcerers, having the augments that make it so that people cannot target or uh, um, are less likely to target them is are pretty good. And this is, of course, going to be up to whatever pawns you find. But for your sorcerer, choose whatever elements are going to make sense for you. But if you have the sorcerers overlap in some spells, and I would try to avoid meteor because it just kind of is, it, it trivializes the game in a lot of ways. But if you have sorcerers with two of the same spell, they will help cast that spell. Um, and I, I think actually they don't need to have two of the same, but by and large, it, it's easier if you're like, hey, I've got three spells on two, diff on two different sorcerers and they both share one really good spell together so they can help cast it together to, to make its uh, cast time way quicker. So that's how you're going to use those sorcerers to basically act as your back line to blow things up with high leaven or whatnot. And then your mage, I would actually have the mage focus on celerity which is the targeted heal they have their their innate heal the aoe heal and then I, outside of that i mean you can put another damage spell on them to add to the mix but i would just make sure that the rest of their abilities are affinities if you have ice fire and lightning affinity and then uh, celerity then they will basically heal everyone and they can just change the element for whatever suits the situation you're dealing with. And I think that that's a really good capability. Um, you can maybe swap one of those affinities and go with Sucker. Uh, sucker? Sucker? Um, <laughs> uh, God, I'm so good at pronunciations. Oh, like an almanac. Um, but the one that, that basically cures ailments. Um, that's another good one. Or the capability to boost and haste everyone. That's another really good buff. But I would just keep the mage 100% support. This makes for a really fun party that is focused around doing magic damage. And allows you, the character, to kind of be that tank that shoots around and do all sorts of fun things. Now, another really fun comp that, I, that I've used a lot, actually, and I really enjoy is magic archer for yourself. And then two archers. And then a mage. And the, the kind of mechanics here for the Magic Archer are, of course, just, just kind of play the Magic Archer however you want. Choose whatever you want um, ability-wise. You can really lean into one element. But what I would tell you, though, for your other archers, make sure they have across all their palette 
um, each one of the types of specific shots, right? Like drenching shot, exploding shot, and blight shot. So you just have all different types of elements you can add on. And then you as the magic archer, you can supplement after you've gotten your two archer pawns to figure out how you want to do this. Like, hey, you know, you're going to go with a uh, drenching shot. So cool. I'm going to do something that I'm going to add in lightning damage. And that's going to jump into the mage, right? Okay, now I want the mage to have lightning affinity, affinity, affinity. <laughs> so they're going to do drenching shot. They've wet the target, wetted the target. And now everyone can do lightning damage and do a little bit more. Or you use the ability to uh, drench them in oil and then you use erupting shot or you can use your fire capabilities as a magic archer. You get a, a fire affinity mage. You can have a lot of fun with playing with the elemental play that archers deliver to you to set you up to just hit home runs with your magic archer that can then directly interplay into that element. And it makes for a lot of fun and a really cool combat where you do, you're doing something on your own and then you didn't realize that something was covered in oil and they just explode. And you're like, oh, ooh, oh, oh, I guess I've done something right or wrong. Um, and this is a, is a, is a definitely a very ranged party. And you're going to think to yourself, man, there's no one in the front line. What, what's going to happen here? It doesn't matter. Uh, you're a magic archer. You have capabilities to just completely flense things with arrows and you have your two archer bros that are going to be able to do tons of damage anyway. Like your, your characters will move around. You might think, oh, if someone just gets up in that cookie jar, it's really going to be rough and tumble. It, it's not. It's It actually works very well, especially if you give the mage something like high 11 is a really good just kind of general lightning ability that I've, I've seen really helps out on just kind of knocking things around and kind of creating a little AoE uh, not distribution, but disruption. It kind of knocks things around. It's really great. But this is a really fun comp, especially if you like playing Magic Archer. Now, another comp here that, again, has a mage in it is two thieves, archer, and mage. So you will be one of these thieves, and then you will have another pawn be another thief. And why I like this is you can play this one of two ways. You both can have plunder, and then that allows you to try to maximize as much stealing as you can. So if you're really trying to get specific materials or you're trying to get a specific item, like if you do a plunder on the, um, well, you, you already have your passive steal, but plunder is like a chance to get an actual rare item, right? Is plunder the, I can't remember if plunder is the upgraded one or not, but an actual rare item from a, a rare creature. And if you do it on a drake, you can get a really strong uh, mystic spear hand weapon for the one that's in um, the very first town. It, it's a really, really awesome way to just get a huge power spike in the game. But what's cool here, too, is you can have, or yourselves can both have, ensnare, right? The ability to, to use your little grappling hook to shove something out of the air. That's a really cool capability. But the nice thing is you can just go and put that on the pawn thief, and you have all the really fun damage capabilities, especially the feint. The feint that you get from the maesters in the, name, the nameless town, you'll have to go back there and after you've done the Brant quest, and you get the feint that allows you to auto dodge everything, but it just drains your stamina. And it, it just turns your character completely disgusting. And you get gut and run, and it basically allows you to almost one shot every single big creature. So you have all those capabilities with you as the two thieves, or with you, you and your other bros of thieves. And then you have an archer giving you range support, and you give them stuff like a, a spinning arrow which just adds a ton of damage in that can be elemental focused based off of the mage you have with you and their affinity capabilities. So if you are taking advantage of a lot of the fire that you can do as a thief and you have uh, erupting shot on your uh, archer, now you have your mage deliver a different affinity altogether, lightning or cold. So now you have fire completely covered and you have a whole other affinity cover too and then the mage can have some more support or some more offensive capabilities it's a really nice combination to really lean into and what i like about it too is that you just have enough characters that are up front and personal because the thief is just disgusting right the thief can move and weave through combat so easily between cutting wind their innate dodge ability and the feint that you don't need a tank type of character you don't really need a tank period in this game but still and then you've got your archer and mage doing backline support. It is just a really fun dynamic. And it kind of plays into a really cool look for all four of these characters kind of jumping and weaving into each other. Now, I want to get away from a comp that is or has a mage. And a pure archer comp for me is really cool. It's really fun. So I say you as the mystic spear hand and um, three archers. I'm sorry. You as a magic archer and three archers. 
and you just go crazy. You just have tons of fun as archers. It's not necessarily a very stupid strong one. Um, it's one that can be a little wonky and you kind of have to really have a good knowledge of the skills that you're going to be giving your pawns, right? Like, okay, am I going to have one character with all of the different shots? Am I going to have one character like this, like that? And you're not going to be able to probably find a pawn that has every single one of the shots. So you're probably going to have to disperse the special elemental shots on all the other pawns one at a time. So across your three spawns, you get your drenching, you get your erupting, you get your blighted, and so on and so forth. So then you can take advantage of those all from your magic archer perspective in being able to then trigger those elements through your element as a magic archer. Um, and it's cool, right? So you as a magic archer, you can do the healing, you can do the resurrecting because your resurrecting arrow can also heal rather than resurrect. So you get to have a lot of fun with this comp because you're not relying on a mage to heal everyone. You are the healer, so you have to be a little bit more active and passive at the same time. Like, hey, I'm backline, I'm doing some supporting fire, I'm shooting here, oh man, that pawn's really low, let me charge up halfway or three, three quarters of a heal arrow to get them directly healed rather than obviously resurrect them, right? So you have a lot of really cool capabilities, and remember that the magic archer delivers tons of augmentation support to the party. Uh, being able to increase their magic defense and, and defense through those augmentations are going to be a lot of the names of the game with this comp by helping to really kind of uh, weather those blows or even using the augmentation to draw aggro to yourself versus the other pawns so that you can kind of control the flow of battle maybe a little bit more. So this one is going to require you to be a little bit more active than I'd say the other comps, which are more, ah, just kind of have fun. The mage will heal you. This is, you have to be the healer. You have to be the kind of person that triggers the synergy of a lot of these elements. And you have to be the ones, obviously, trying to not die. So, have fun with this one. It is a little different, though. Another one that's pretty different and spicy is you as a fighter and then three warriors. It's just the slam bros from the Mighty Ducks movies, right? You guys are just getting up in that cookie jar. You have three fighter uh, warriors that are just slam fucking everything that they can find. And you are holding the line with a shield. <laughs> it's a lot of chaos. And you're going to find moments where you're like, well, what are my pawns doing? And then you're going to turn around and see that all three of them were charging up big hits. And they're all three going to let these off. So the ground just starts exploding in all these big hits. Um, it will be a little wonky here just because, like I said... You're going to have a lot of different stuff going on, but what really is cool to take advantage of is the fact that warriors really lean into knockdown, right? So making sure to get one or two of the pawns that have the lunge capability that allows you to jump off their shoulder and go and latch onto something is really great. Yes, for you, but it's also good for your pawns because they will just simply do that act for themselves. One pawn will do the, 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 the lunge ability. Another pawn will jump onto his back lunge onto a uh, big scary monster and start slamming into it, right? There's a lot of really good abilities that both the warrior and the fighter have for being grappled and doing a lot of damage. I think it's gouging strike for the uh, uh, fighter and the warrior has a different one, but it has the same overall effect. Uh, I'm actually maybe lunging strike. Um, but you kind of put these two together and you have a really fun, chaotic party that is just the complete opposite of the party focused solely on archers, right? So if we just talked about the magic archer and everything. Um, an archer comp. This is just the fighter and the fighter and the and the warrior comp. So, yeah, you don't have a mage, so there's no healing outright at all in this party. So it might be worthwhile to have one or two of the pawns have second wind. Um, it's not going to be huge, you know. It just kind of helps them out and kind of stabilizing. But and also making sure you have the augment from thief that allows you to regenerate health whenever you kill someone. So you've got some sort of heal. But this is going to be a hectic one that you're going to be able to do a lot of raw damage. But you're also going to have to consider the fact that you don't have um, any health coming in. So you're going to need to use consumables and the such. Another little basic one is just simply two sorcerers, a fighter, and a mage. And you could even go three sorcerers if you wanted here and go one fighter. But you just have another pawn be the fighter and have them kind of quote unquote tank for you. Make sure they have shield summons and... Uh, the ability to make it so they draw additional um, aggro. And then you as the sorcerer, you just choose spells that kind of overlap with some of your pawn choices to help them out. And what I like about this is with you as a sorcerer, you have the capability to kind of spot choose when you want to help out a spell. 
And that's kind of a little bit better than the AI doing it because sometimes the AI will not do it or they'll choose crappy spells to overlap with each other or whatever it is. When you're in kind of control of that of that mechanic, you can really jump into something really hard. And this is a time when I'd say it's a good time to bring Meteor because it's fun when you can have control over it. When the pawns have control over it, they can just kind of go to town a little too much. And you're like, oh, oh, okay, well, I guess, I guess we don't do anything in this fight, huh? So... With you having access to it, you can kind of control the flow of it, which I think is a little bit better. Um, but still, I think having access to you as a sorcerer and giving, kind of calling out when you want to help out the casting of another spell makes for a little bit more of a fun play style when playing sorcerer. Because I personally, mage and sorcerer are the two vocations I have put the least amount of time into. I, they just don't appeal to me gameplay-wise. Um, I don't think they're bad. I think they actually are a really cool, awesome ways to play casters in video games. But... They just don't do it for me. And I think that leaning into the mechanic of being able to co-cast those spells together makes it a more fun and interesting class to me because I feel like I'm actually taking part in a party rather than me just kind of raw-dogging and casting spells the whole time while my AI does a bunch of other crap. So this is one I think that really allows you to have a lot of fun casting spells. Now this last one's wild. This last one is, is kind of like game-breaking in a lot of ways because thieves are already really strong. And a thief on its own is really strong. Two thieves is really strong. But you just take four thieves, and if they all have the special feint, then they're really not going to take damage. So they don't have to worry about healing. And they're going to be able to steal things and snare things, uh, enchant their weapons with fire, or just do gut and run or quick kill. It's just, uh, it's like a broken party comp. Four thieves is so strong. Um, now... It's not as strong in the beginning of the game, right? Because you don't have access to those feints. But as soon as you, I don't know, get like level 20 and you get access to those feints, you, you get that feint pretty early in the game if you, if you kind of go right for it. Uh, and you just have that active and you can really pretty much do everything. And the feint, or the, uh, the thieves augments, even if you just strictly went with thieves to your characters and you didn't have any other rank to anyone else, the augments for thieves are really strong. Stuff like increasing your strength and helping you to uh, uh, recover health on your kills. Like There are just so many capabilities that the thief has access to that can really just crack something open so quick. So this one is, I think this is one if you really want to just have fun abusing the, the kind of mechanics that the thief has to really do a lot of fun stuff. And I think this is really, really, really going to show that off. And the last comp I'm going to recommend here is not even really a comp. I'm going to recommend that you don't take two additional pawns, and it's just you and another pawn, your main pawn, of course. And this can be done in any combination you want to do it. But I'm going to recommend you try this if you find that the game is just too easy, which it very much becomes not trivial beyond a certain point, but it just becomes like, okay, um, I know the way to fight this monster, so I'm going to do it, and I'm going to win very quickly. Especially if you stay in a lot of the earlier portions of the game, the monsters don't scale up everywhere. They only scale up as you progress through the map. So if I were to fight a Cyclops at the very beginning area of the game, it's way easier to kill than a Cyclops at the very end portions of the game. So keep those things in mind. And I think, too, it's a really... It's kind of a... It adds a little bit of a challenge mode to the game, too, that I really like. And I, I just want to showcase this in a video on party comps. That's just me not talking about a party. It's me talking about you and a bro smashing stuff up. It kind of makes for a, a really fun way to play the game that I think you're going to take a lot of... You're going to get a lot out of it. It's not just going to be, hey, you're going to min-max this to the, to, the, to the ground. You're going to need to really rely on each other's strengths and weaknesses. You're really going to need to say, hey... Okay, I'm going to play with this pawn here. Uh-oh, we're now fighting a golem and we don't have any way to crack it open. Or hey, you know what? We don't have the proper magical affinity to really do serious damage here. Or this griffin keeps taking off because we're not able to burn its wings. So it, it makes you, especially because you're limited across you and one other pawn to eight abilities, right? Four for you, four for them. So that kind of forces you to play in a certain style or at least make you consider very heavily what you take. On all these party comps, I've not talked really about your skill selections because it, it kind of doesn't really matter, right? Across four characters, you have 16 skills to pull from, and you can really kind of go hog wild with all of them. I almost said hogs me, I don't know why. Um, but I really encourage you to try something out like this. Play a simply something simple, so a fighter and a mage. That's a real simple combination that's actually pretty damn fun. Even if you play two thieves 
it's really cool and super dynamic. And you have to also consider, all right, there's just two of us, so we have to kill something quick. And we might run out of stamina for our feint. And now we're kind of shit out of luck, and we have to dodge around this and, and recover each other's stamina and use consumables. Or two casters. Or a magic archer and an archer. Or a magic archer and a, and a fighter. Or a mystic spear hand and a warrior. There's a lot of really fun comb combinations you can do when you just limit it to two. Remember, you can take advantage of all the advanced locations. And I didn't talk about warfare in this video at all and it's because you're blending a lot of stuff together so i think that deserves its own sole focus on me talking about how the warfare can do a lot of cool things in its own party compositions rather than me saying this party comp or war, warfare because the warfare is just like i'm pushing it into so many other situations when it's just two people you can have a lot of fun with a lot of really fun combinations and i really encourage you to try this out also you don't need to worry about the dragon's plague as much because you're not going to pull in someone infected. So try this out. I think you're really going to like it. And the difficulty of the game is going to spike in a way that you're like, oh, this game's not that easy. And it's going to be a lot more enjoyable for you if you think the game is trivial. But at that, that brings our video here to a close. So we went through some party comps here together. I have some more that I've written down. I put it into the description here. And I really encourage you to try these out or try out different ways of playing. When I jumped into this game, I was like, I'm going to be an archer. And I stayed on archer for like, I don't know, two hours, and then I jumped to a fighter, and then I jumped to a thief, and all these other different things, and I played these different ways, and I had my pawn go into different vocations, and that's just the name of the game, right? The game tries to tell you, hey, all these vocations are good, play them all in different ways. But really, different party comps allow for different ways to approach fights, and I think that's one of the biggest strengths of this game, is that every time I swap vocations, I'm swapping the way that I'm going to approach fights. And that kind of makes, it helps keep it fresh. You know, I'm loving the hell out of playing just like that, just kind of open world, slam and bam, everything I find, I'm going to try and find a way to kill it or get onto it, whatever it is. So if you have any recommendations for really cool party compositions, anything like that, go ahead and let it be known in the comment section below. I always like to make sure there is as much info out there as possible. Maybe you say, Hey, you know what? Your comp for uh, three archers and a magic and a, and a magic archer is cool, but I actually did Mystic Spear Hand and three archers and got way more out of it. So any kind of recommendations. I also didn't talk about Trickster because personally, I don't have enough time played on Trickster to recommend good compositions with it. So if you have cool Trickster comps, please let that be known in the comment section as well. But as always, guys, thank you so much for watching here today. Have a good one and take care.